everyone, it's Shell from Scrap Secrets and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is part of a very special hop with my crafty friends and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the video. We're going to start the card off by using some Lawn Fawn products. The two die sets I'm going to use are Forest Backdrop and Build a Campsite. And the two stamp sets are S'more the Merrier and Forest Friends. We're going to be creating a double acetate shaker card, and I've never done one of these before, so you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments how I did. I think it came out okay, um, but I'd love to hear your opinions and if there are tips or tricks that you would show me um, if I, you know, to do this card better. So the first thing that I did was I cut the backdrop, which is the forest backdrop, out of black cardstock. And now we're going to create the scene that goes behind it. This is an MFT hill stencil. I think it's called a hillside stencil. I'll try to remember to link it below in the more information section. I believe it's still available. And we're using two colors of Distress Oxide to create this hill. What we're using now is Rustic Wilderness, and then I'm going to come back in with a little bit of the Forest Moss to add some depth and dimension to this part of the scene. So I go back in with the Forest Moss, and I just keep putting the frame back over just to make sure that there's no white spots uh, when I put the card together. I just want to make sure everything is colored in and it's going to look okay. So after I'm happy with the way the grass looks, I'm going to wipe off the stencil and then we're going to actually create a mask so that we can create the sky for the scene. So I wipe that off and then I take a piece of scrap cardstock and a pencil, trace out the stencil, and then cut it out so that I've created a mask for the bottom. I picked out three colors of Distress Oxide so that we can create the sky and those are chip sapphire seedless preserves and black soot i like to add a little bit of black soot to the very top and then kind of to the sides just to add a little bit of depth and dimension to the sky so here you see me lining up the mask and the trick to not getting that white line in between the grass and the sky is to make sure that the stencil or the mask whatever you're using is down almost to the point where you can see the green or see whatever color it is that you're trying to not to blend into but to blend up to. So you'll see me go back and actually move the mask down a little bit because I had it a little bit too high. And so while I'm doing the sky, I want to talk to you a little bit about the hop. So several of my crafty friends and I have gotten together and have decided that either every month, every other month, depending on how our schedules are, we're going to do a hop and have a theme. So this month's theme is Sparkle Blends. So the shop is called Doodles Paper Playground and it's over on Etsy currently. Um, I believe she might be moving that at some point, but right now she's over on Etsy, so I will leave the link to her shop and she has the most amazing mixes for shaker cards. It's pretty much all I use for shaker cards are her sparkle blends. Um, I have a set that are coming this weekend and I'm super excited to get them because they're Halloween ones. She has some gemstones over there. She also has a couple other products which you will see in this video. I use two of the other products that she has in the shop. I definitely would encourage you to check out her shop. She did not sponsor this. We've all purchased everything that you see in these videos. So it's not a sponsored hop. We just decided that we all really love sparkle blends and we decided to make that the theme of the hop for this month. So I believe that all of us are probably gonna be creating shaker cards because that's generally what you do with the sparkle blends um, is create uh, shaker cards. So I uh, can't wait to see what everybody else has made. I haven't seen anyone's cards as of this voiceover. So I'm very excited to see what all of my friends do because they are super crafty. And please make sure that you check out everybody's videos because again, they are amazing, amazing crafters. Okay, so back to the card. Now we're taking those same two colors of Distress Oxide and going over the trees. There are single trees in this so that you can add trees, but I wanted the backdrop to, I wanted the frame to be black and then the trees to have color to them. So I cut them out of 
green cardstock and now I'm just adding a little bit of Distress Oxide on the sides to give them a little bit of depth and dimension. This lantern is from the Build a Camp site and I just thought that it would look really cute on the stump. So I'm taking a blending brush, that's rabbit hole blending brush, adding a little bit of yellow from, I believe that was mustard seed, and adding that to the lantern. So, and I cut the lantern out of red cardstock. That's the only thing I think I used from the Build a Campfire set. So I'm gonna put that to the side and I'm going to start assembling the front of the card. So I'm using my Be Creative Honey Bee Glue to glue all of these trees down. They fit perfectly on top of here, so you can either use them by themselves or create depth and dimension with this. You could do some, some of them popped up, some of them back. There's so many different things you can do with this scene. Next, I'm stamping out the images from the two stamp sets, which are S'more the Merrier and Forest Feast. Stamping them out in Versa Fine Black Onyx Ink. And then we're going to stamp out the trunk from, and that one is also from the Forest Feast. We're using Gathered Twigs and Walnut Stain. I just wanted to, it, I was going to stamp it in black. I started to and then I realized that the it stamped out the entire trunk. So I switched to the Distress Oxides to give it a brown color and then we're going to do something extra to give it a little bit more dimension in a minute after I fussy cut them out. So once the ink was all dry, I took them out of there and I decided that I was going to fussy cut out the stump. We're using antique linen on the top of the stump because that wouldn't be white and I stamped it onto white cardstock. I'm just using it to give it a little bit of texture and it gives it a little bit more depth and dimension with the coloring. So after that, we're going to be using my Derwent Inktense Watercolor pencils to color in these images. I didn't leave a lot of the coloring in because you guys have seen me color in other videos, plus this video was super, super long. So I'm just really showing you the porcupine, how I decided to pull the colors out from this and leave a little bit of texture in there. Now that the coloring and the fussy cutting is done, we are going to go back in and add the stars to the background. So I'm using Hero Arts Reactive Ink in Sea Salt and my brand new fan brush. I stamped the ink onto a block and then put a little bit of water on it and you can see me flicking the fan brush to add a little bit of stars to the back. It wasn't working as well as I thought it was. I think I might have watered it down a little bit too much. But I did it a couple times and then I got the starry background that I was looking for. So once that was created, I put that to the side to dry so that we could work on some other parts of the card. Now we're going to get ready to put the scene together. So I bring in the stump and the lantern and put the frame on top of it just to see how everything is going to look. And then we're going to fussy cut the characters out. I did that off screen because you don't want to sit there and watch me do that. And now you're going to see the assembly of the guitars with each of the animals. The owl, it was pretty easy and I th think it looked pretty seamless, but the porcupine, it was a little bit different because that wasn't meant to have the guitar. So I think it looks okay. I mean, you're not, it's not really the focus of the scene. So it's more of a, he's more of a background character. I'm laying everything out, making sure everything looks okay, and now I'm taking my black marker and going around the edges. When I do that, I do this because it helps get rid of that white core and it just makes it look finished. And if I've accidentally cut the black li stamp line off of any part of the image, this try this makes it look a little bit more seamless and not like I accidentally cut the uh, the edge of the image off. So now I'm just laying everything out, making sure everything looks good, and then gluing the animals and the lantern into place so that we can create the scene and get ready to get to the shaker. So we're nowhere near done this card yet. This one took me a really, really long time. So I it was about an hour worth of footage that I cut down to, uh, I think, like 15 minutes. I think that's what this is going to end up being, or maybe less. So there you go, I'm sorry I'm a little bit out of frame, um, but I'm gluing everything down, making sure everything looks right before we can move on to the adding of the acetate and then getting to the fun part, the shaker and what this 
card hop is all about the fantastic sparkle blends. So now for the fun part, which is to create my own blend. I love Amber's blends. I think they're fantastic. Sometimes the entire blend doesn't go with the card that I'm making. And sometimes I make a card specifically because I have a blend in mind. But I really do like to create my own by mixing and matching elements from some of the blends that she created. So you'll see me here going through a couple different blends with my sparkle stick and picking up the sparkle blends and putting them in that triangle bowl there. All of these products are available from Amber Shop. And the blends that I'm using are Twilight Meadow, Baby Shark, Allison's Gothic Peacock, Rhiannon's Moonchild, Grown Up Grape Juice, Oh Hollow, and Clearly in Love. Now some of these blends are no longer available. The way it works is they are limited editions and when the blends are sold out, Amber will make different blends. She often has elements from older blends in some of her newer ones. So if you see something and it's not available anymore, there's probably a blend that you would like that has a lot of similar elements to it. So, which is great because you can supplement some of your favorite older ones with some of the newer blends. So you see, I'm just adding uh, probably one of the last sparkle blends. This is the Clearly in Love. I love extending uh, my sparkle blends by adding a little bit of clear sparkle in there. And you can see I got that all over my desk. I, I'm such a mess. So I just went back in and add a little, added a little bit of blue because I didn't think there was enough. And now we are going to create the base for the shaker. So I'm taking some old packaging and wrapping it around the seam part of my card. The reason that I'm doing this is we're going to do a double acetate shaker so that the shaker pieces actually go in front of these images, but if we didn't add the acetate to it, the sparkle blends would get stuck on the images and they wouldn't shake. So adding that first piece down and now we're going to add it to that forest backdrop piece. I'm using my ATG to put glue on the back of the whole entire image. And then we're going to put this extra packaging on top of it and cut off the excess. And I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. It didn't, it seemed to get stuck on the sides. I did not use an anti-static powder tool. I don't have one. I need to get one and I keep saying that. Uh, so maybe that's the reason. I know that there's other people that do fantastic shakers and not everybody uses them. So let me know in the comments if you see something that I'm doing wrong and there's reasons that my stuff is getting stuck on the side. So another thing that I need to get is foam tape. So since I don't have any, what I'm doing is I'm taking a sheet of just uh, fun foam and cutting it down into strips. So for the bottom layer that creates the well that's going to hold the sparkle blends in, I make sure that I use full pieces to go across the top and the bottom and the sides. When I'm creating a second or third layer, depending on how thick I need it to be, I don't worry about that as much. I just use some of the scraps just to add, cause you're just adding dimension, but I want there to be as little possible gaps where things can get out. So you wanna make sure when you're creating that well, you're butting each piece of foam up to the piece in front of it, on the side of it, however you decide to put it together because you don't want any way for those sparkle blends to escape. So I use my ATG and taped those down and now we're getting ready to put the second layer on here. And you saw me use my uh, Honey Bee cloth to kind of just go through the edges. I just wanted to make sure there was no tape on there that the sparkle blends could get stuck to before I added them in there. Now I added the tape first so that I didn't get any of the sparkle blends that stick to it. So you see there, I shake it around and it looks like it's shaking really well. I add that scene piece onto it and then it shakes. Now you can see on the left-hand side, a lot of them get stuck. I might've had some glue that I didn't realize um, and that's what happened and they got stuck there. But this is basically the end of the card. I'm taking my ATG and I am sticking it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch black card base. 
And that is the shaker card, guys. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part of the shaker was. I hope that you're enjoying the hop. Here are some close-up pictures and a little clip of the card shaking. And I'll see you guys again real soon for another video.